Hi. Um, I know you heard about, uh, about much, many, many presentations about machine learning, right, today. I will talk about machine learning today as well, but from the other side, showing how not to do machine learning products, okay? So, um, I started doing machine learning um, in 2007, so before it actually became so cool like it is now, right? Uh, now it actually it is a buzzword, you, we can actually hear a lot of GPT stuff, for example, right? A few years back about, um, here, yeah, next. Uh, about uh, chatbots, for example, right? Uh, we can also hear something about uh, that AI is the new electricity or AI is the new uh, UX or UI. Um, it will change the world again. I'm, I'm saying again because I'm hearing that AI is changing the world every, I don't know, two or three years, depending on the technology that actually uh, pops up. And I'm, not, I'm saying it not just to say don't do AI, don't implement AI, but do it in the right way, in a proper way. So um, that's quite an old statistic, but it's still valid. So based, based on the, um, uh, based on uh, some research, 40% of AI startups in, in Europe, they say they do, I mean, startups in general, they say they do AI, right? So why they do that? Well, because they will just get more money, right? So say you do something with AI, you will get more money. That's correlated, right? Um, I would do that. I mean, if I would be a founder of a startup, if I, if I have a chance to actually say that I do something with AI and get more money, sure, why not, right? Um, but actually, based on the Gardner research, many of such the projects actually, they fail. They fail for many reasons, right? Even 85% of this, this kind of startups just fail. Um, and yes, software development, software projects, generally there is a high, high uh, rate of failures. Um, also in AI, but for different reasons, right? So, um, as I mentioned before, GPT is cool now, but as you can see here, there's, this is the hype cycle, right? Um, let me just go back one step. Have you heard, you heard about blockchain, right? Is it cool still? Not so, actually. Not, not so cool like it was, I don't know, three years ago, right? When everyone was actually buying cryptocurrencies, bitcoins, and so on. Hope you didn't vote too much. Uh, I mean, the price changed. Uh, and the same, not exactly the same, but it's, it's, it, it, the hype is also kind of connected to AI. I mean, we have also different kind of topics. It's a bit more advanced, I mean, more complex because we have many terms related to AI, like the GPT, right? Uh, we now hear that actually GPT will, uh, will actually uh, change the customer service, customer support. Uh, I even heard some, uh, some, uh, some opinions that it will change actually also the software development. Um, so even some people t say that actually we are already on the AGI, right? So, I don't know if you saw the series Westworld on HBO. I recommend you season one. Um, that's AGI. We are still very, very far from that. Um, so most of the actually most of the solutions are actually deep neural networks, right? So this is an example of a neural network. One of the blocks is just one layer of many, many, many weights. So you can imagine uh, inception neural network you have more than, uh, more than 20 million weights, so parameters to, to learn. So it's quite complex, right? Um, so that's why also the complexity and the mistakes happens. So what are the typical mistakes? Um, one of it, something that I already mentioned, is about the hype. Um, I, will show, I, will, I will talk about some examples just, just in a minute, but um, in this case, uh, in this failure, it's typical. We do something because it's cool, not because we really have a business case that something that will solve the problem, right? And I have many customers. I, I founded my company in 2010. Now we have 400 people supporting our customers. And we, uh, we see that actually there are many customers approaching us, uh, and they, don't, they want to do a, something with AI for some reasons, like 
the, more, uh, the main reason is actually to because it's AI. So in many cases, there are simpler um, methods to solve that. All right, so let me tell you a story about a little girl. You might heard a story in your childhood uh, with the bottle of wine and something to deliver to your grandma, right? And the, the, the bad wolf, right? So uh, in this story, uh, the goal was from the pattern recognition point of view, it was about recognizing, uh, distinguish between your grandma and the wolf, the bad wolf, right? Um, it was quite easy, um, obviously, but if you would have an a, a task to distinguish between husky dogs and a wolf, you know how a husky dog looked like, right? So that's a husky dog, right? It looks like a for many people, it might look like a wolf. And as you can see here on the right, there is an image where the gray pixels are the pixels that doesn't have any influence on the prediction. So let's imagine you have a model that where you actually you achieve 90% of accuracy. Is it high? Yes, it is high. But if you recognize on an image a dog or a wolf, the first thing that comes to your mind is, okay, um, what are the features that the model used to recognize this object? Ears, eyes, nose, I don't know, the chest of the dog, right, of the animal. And here, as you can see, the most important was the background, the snow. Why? Because the husky dogs, if you take a picture, you take a picture at home, in the garden, on the couch, but not in the forest, not in the wild, right? So this kind of models doesn't work. And that, that's very, very, unfortunately, that's a very popular issue where actually you build something that has a good, good quality, actually quite high accuracy, but still uh, not so good uh, at the end on recognizing stuff. Um, another problem is actually this, the data. So data storing, data acquisition. That's a very popular issue. Um, Valuable uh, solution, not nice, right? That's another thing. Do you recognize this car on the right? It's a Tesla car. Yes, it crashed into the truck uh, because it was uh, the truck was recognized as the landscape. So using proper data is uh, important. That's a that's a that's a known issue, right? Uh, finding good data scientists uh, on the market is quite difficult. Um, now, not so difficult like it was some years ago, a few years back, but still, it's a, it's a quite typical issue that we actually uh, hire people that didn't have domain knowledge, for example. Oh, that's a nice one. Thai Tweetbot. Microsoft built in 2016 a Tweetbot. That's one of the most, mm, one of the mm, softest tweet that it's actually tweeted, right? And 24 hours from a profile of a teenager, it became, it became a racist, right? They shut it down in 24 hours, and they made a lot of, uh, many mistakes there, security issues and so on. All right, so um, just a few examples of my customers. One of the such examples is a travel company. They received many emails uh, from airlines. And they, had, they wanted to actually pass the emails, pass like, you know, getting some information out of their emails and actually put them into the database. And they came to us saying, okay, we want to have an NLP model, right? Normal thing. And we investigated that, that well, they don't need a uh, machine learning model. They just need to use regular expression, which is a typical uh, method for passing text, very simple one. You will get a cheaper solution, high accuracy, uh, faster. They didn't agree with us because they got a funding from the government to use our machine learning model. So they still spend money on machine learning model, even if it was a worse solution, right? Another case, um, a bank. I, I don't say the names by purpose, okay? That's a, that's a bank, uh, a French bank. Um, they actually came to us um, saying, okay, we have, uh, we have a POC. Um, we do it for uh, seven, eight months. What do, we, what do we do wrong? 
Well, if you do a PLC for eight months, that's something that you do wrong. After three weeks, if it doesn't work, just stop, right? Probably you just have a different, bad approach, a wrong approach, or there is no solution for that. A German chemical company, uh, they asked me to do a training on machine learning because they wanted to use machine learning for some, um, yeah, uh, for some drug development. And the problem was not with machine learning, but with the data. They collected data for five years. You can imagine, five years, the people manually put it in a spreadsheet or other tool, and they still don't have standardized data. Uh, it was full, uh, it was actually not usable for machine learning. So the problem was that they, they, they don't, it's not about the knowledge about machine learning, but rather than the data that they had. So, well, it happens. Another bank, this one from Switzerland this time, um, they, they, had, they didn't have really knowledge about chatbots, right? I did many trainings in the past about chatbots. Um, they came to us because they actually built a very simple chatbot and ask us to actually do a retrieval base because of lack of knowledge how to build proper chatbots. So that's also a typical uh, problem that there is a lack of domain expertise and also technology-wise. And the one <laughs> uh, car company, automotive company from Germany, uh, everything went well. The project was developed just like it should be. But there was one issue. It was developed for Germany but it was planned to be used in China. Well, it didn't work out, so all the code just got deleted because, well, <laughs> there, are different, there are different laws, different rules in China than in Germany. It wasn't really uh, applied to this market. Oh, here's another failure, typical security one. Um, it's very easy to fool a neural network, right? Because it's complex, you can see the stop sign. You can imagine a, automo a, a car, a self-driving car, right? Autonomous car. If you put a sticker on it, on a stop sign, it might not recognize it as a stop sign. Easy to fool. Oh, here you have two persons. Both are, should be recognized as persons. But if you wear this kind of a um, painting on you, the, machine, the neural network would not recognize you as a person, as a human being. Go to Amazon, you can buy these t-shirts right, with, this, with this painting, not to be recognized by neural networks as humans, if you want to. Oh, that's a, a, a British one. Uh, Alexa um, suggesting to suicide this person for a better good, right? So that's not the way how it, the product should work, right? Uh, it should not, rec not recommend to suicide yourself. Uh, Google this time, right? That's a racist, right? And this is what happens in Google when they actually uh, marked this, uh, the images. Or here you have um, Uber, right? That kills Peter Astian. Didn't recognize it. Another failure. So what is the solution? Well, there are many solutions, but one that I can recommend to you, because I just have 20 minutes, um, is actually due, to due diligence. What is a due diligence uh, meeting? It's actually a meeting where actually the domain experts, so let's say if it's a banking company, so the people with domain knowledge in finance, meet with the people with the knowledge in machine learning. Only the small part are cases where it makes sense because it makes sense for the company, they get some value out of it, or it is actually possible technically to do that, right? What is this meeting about? It is uh, about actually um, getting an answer for five questions. Do we really get something out of it, right? From the business point of view? I don't know, do we increase the revenues, reduce the cost? Maybe we can open a new, new service, for example. And from a technical point of view, do we really have the knowledge? Do we have the data, right? Do we have the capacity? If we don't, well, we should change something. 
All right, just summary, 40 seconds. Um, just do the due diligence before you start a project. If you started it, fail fast. I know that's a typical term for any startup, but especially when it comes to machine learning projects because they are research projects and you can spend a lot of money getting nothing out of it. That's the truth about research projects, like a machine learning project once. And obviously don't use machine learning because it's cool. If you have any questions, I'm here available for you after the, after the, after the talk. Uh, you can also find me on YouTube, some of my TEDx talks about how to use uh, machine learning in the healthcare, because that's what I do mostly, uh, professionally, uh, applying machine learning in, in medicine. Thank you.